بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وطبيب نفوسنا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله محمد محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا سيما بقية الله روحي وأرواه العالمين لمقدمه الفداء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر صدق الله العلي العظيم سلامات Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are in the evening of the martyrdom anniversary of Amirul Mu'mineen, Imamul Muttaqeen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi afdalu salawat wa tahiyyat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum. You can imagine what a hard day has been today for Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam, and tonight or back home. I can imagine Imam Hassan, Imam Hussain, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, Zainab sallallahu alayhi wa all the members of Ahlul Bayt, how grieved they are really uh, tonight, the first night, without their father being uh, around. Also tonight is the night before one of the most possible uh, nights of Qadr. In fact, the night of Qad, according to the Qur'an, is only one night, as Qur'an is using the term in a singular uh, form, as I'll explain it. And the concept, and this mysterious uh, concept of the night of Qad is mentioned in the Qur'an explicitly using the term Laylatul Qadr, only in surah that is named after it, Surah Al-Qadr, that I just began my talk with, uh, inshallah, we all know it uh, off by heart. In preparation for tomorrow night, as my contribution also, based on the researches that for several years I have been doing to, uh, to find out and in quest of the Laylatul Qad, inshallah, humbly, very briefly, I present to you, uh, like the brief of my uh, research about Laylatul Qad. What is Laylatul Qad? When is Laylatul Qad? What are we supposed to do in Laylatul Qad? What is the significance of Laylatul Qad? And issues related to that. As I said, because this concept of Laylatul Qad is mentioned exclusively in uh, Surah Al Qad, so let us go to Surah Al Qad and review the meaning of this blessed Surah of the Quran. First and foremost, to start with, every chapter of the Quran, first of all, let me tell you that as you know, the entire Quran is a dispensary of medicine. As Quran says, the Nunazilu min al Quran ma huwa shifaun wa rahmatun lil mu'minin. We have sent down this Qur'an that in that there are uh, like cure, healing for the believers and mercy for the believers. So the Holy Qur'an is a dispensary of medicine, both to cure and to prevent. The entire Qur'an is a medicine not only for our soul, even for our body uh, as well. Take the example that Imam Sadiq salam says that if you recite Surah Al-Hamd, Fatiha Al-Kitab, on a dead person 70 times, 7-0, and he's revived, I'm not surprised. That's how effective this Surah Hamd is, as an example. So every chapter of the Quran, there are some merits for its recitation and some benefits in its recitation, physically and spiritually. Surah Al-Ghad, one of the merits of its recitation is that, for example, Imam Sadiq says that I'm surprised 
how would someone doesn't ever read Surah Al-Qadr in non-Zanafi Lalat Al-Qadr in his or her daily prayers yet expects their prayers to be accepted. So if you want your daily prayers be accepted, part of the contribution towards the acceptance of your prayer is that very often make sure that you recite Surah Fatiha as the second Surah in the Qur'an that we read. In fact, it is because of this and similar narrations that our scholars, our Fuqaha, Maraja, they have said that after Surah Tawheed, Surah Qul Huwa Ahad, that is the most rewarding Surah as the second Surah in your namaz, the second most important that deserves to be repeated, be recited in your uh, daily prayers is Surah Inna Anzalna Fi Laylat Al Qad. So please keep this in mind. On the practice of Ahlul Bayt, we notice this as well. One of the narrators, for example, he says, I had the honor of accompanying Imam Rida السلام, from Medina to Marv, to Mashhad. All the way through this journey, I noticed that every time Imam is praying, uh, he is also, apart from Qul Huwa Allah Ahad, uh, as the second surah, he is reciting surah in Na Anzalna Fi Lallat Al Ghad. Conclusion, this surah must be so significant that Imam Rida al Imam Masum is choosing that apart from surah Qul Huwa Allah Ahad. There is also a had so many hadiths, I'll just share one more and move on. There is also a hadith that if you recite Surah Qul Surah Inna Anzalna Fi Lalat Al Ghad, very often you're used to this, you're acquainted with this. And also especially in the months of Ramadan, in nights of the months of Ramadan, not only in the night of Qab, you're used to reciting Surah Inna Anzalna Fi Lalat Al Ghad, it will be said to you that Qad Ghufra Laka Ma Mada, your previous sins are forgiven. So get acquainted with this surah in Na Anzalna Fi Lalat Al Ghad, it helps a lot. This is some uh, rawayat about the merits of recitation of surah in Na Anzalna Fi Lalat Al Ghad. Let's go through the meaning of the surah. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Inna Anzalna Obviously, this Inna in Arabic language is used when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in Arabic language when we want to give emphasis to, some, to something. Very often, Arabic sentences begin with this to give emphasis. Inna yani, verily, surely, we. A very common question, very often I'm asked that, Shaykh, what is it that Quran, very often, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to himself as we. How many God do we have? Even non-Muslims, they have asked me this question. Why is it that in your scripture, you have this expression of we a lot? God says, we have created, we send down the, the, the rain. How many gods do we have? Obviously, there's only one God. Not only one God. I had a discussion with one atheist and he said, oh, look, the difference between us as, any, as uh, me as an atheist and you as a theist is only one number. I believe in zero God, you believe in one God. Well, what's the big deal about him? I said, this is the problem of our education, that you are miseducated about the uh, concept of God. When we say that God is one, we don't mean numerical uh, like oneness. When we say God is one, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أحد. God is unique, peerless. This is the meaning of one, oneness of God. That's why subhanAllah in Arabic language, this expression that we have for God, Allah, I don't find it in any other language. At this language that I'm familiar with, in uh, uh, English we say God's, it's possible to use it plural. It's even English uh, possible to use m masculine or feminine for it. Goddess, for example, huh? But in Farsi, in Urdu, we have also Khuda, Khuda, Ha, Khuda, Yan. We have it in proof sense as well. Whereas Arabic language, this word of Allah in Arabic doesn't have any feminine. In fact, it's not even masculine. Although in Arabic language, we have no choice but to use it, the, the pronoun that we refer to something, it has to be either uh, he, she, or it. It, we use it for your information. It, we use it for inanimate, for unintelligent things, like referring to the piece of wood as it. He and she, we use it to intelligence, uh, intelligent beings. So, uh, because the actual wording of, not the, the, that God is man or, or masculine, because the word in Arabic is masculine, then the he is referred to it. Not that God is he or she. Otherwise, this uh, word Allah is neutral. It's not he, it's not she. God is the creator of genders, obviously. There is no plurality in it as well. In Arabic language, you cannot say, I don't know, for example, 
Allahad, Allahun. There is no plurality for it. To express that concept of unity of God, no word is better than uh, Allah, by the way. So what is it that here God says, Inna anzalnahu, we have sent down. Who is we? We say this we in Arabic, in English, we call it royal uh, we. We call it majestyly, majesty uh, we. Like we the queen of England. How many queens does it have at one time? There's only one queen. But this is how, you know, authorities, the expression of sovereignty they use when they say we. They don't mean plural in the sense of literally plurality of it. So understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he converses with us, the fact that he converses with us in the language that we understand, like addressing the prophet he spoke to and the words were created in Arabic language, you are bound by using the Arabic structure and Arabic grammar as well. I was talking to some of the brothers and sisters, I told them that there is an ayah in the Quran that the Almighty God says that it is easier for a, a camel to go through the eye of a needle than an arrogant inter paradise. Similar distorted version of it we have in the Bible as well. Now, when I translate this ayah, I said it's easier for an arrogant, uh, it is easier for a pig to fly than an arrogant dupe to paradise. Pigs don't fly, but this is like expression that we have for it in, in English. You see, when you speak English, you, you use English uh, literature, English proverb, and in English expressions and things like that. Similarly, when you speak Arabic, you are bound by Arabic grammar. So, in, and let alone that we have this in English and other languages as well. So, don't rest assured that this inna and zalna and similar expressions has nothing to do with plurality of God, obviously. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil ghafir. So, what is anna anzalnahu? Let's go through every word of it. We have revealed it. What is this it? Who refers to? In some of the previous night, I mentioned putting some of the ayat together that this inna anzalnaha interestingly is used in the Quran 12 times always with a pronoun and everywhere else that you check it you see that it refers to the Quran therefore here likewise this inna anzalnaha you should say that similar to all other instances used in the Quran it means that we have revealed it i.e. we have revealed the Quran inna anzalnaha fi lal this is another example in Surah Dukhan fi laylatil mubarakah the proof for that is the ayah that we have in Surah uh, Al-Baqarah to refresh your memory. Shahr Ramadan, Alladhi Unzila Fihe Al-Quran. The month of Ramadan is in which the Quran is revealed. So, Inna Anzalna Ho Fi Laylat Al-Qadr. It means that Laylat Al-Qadr, first of all, is a blessed month. We already spoke about it. Laylat Al-Qadr is in the month of Ramadan because Quran is revealed in the month of Ramadan. So in throughout the month of Ramadan, all the nights of the month of Ramadan, we are in quest and in search of a, a night that is known as Laylat Al-Qadr. First of all, it is night, not day. It is not day of Qadr, Laylat Al-Qadr. Some of its significance, inshallah, that I can understand, I, I share with you. Although I must say that Laylatul Qad, Lay night of Qad, some people they say, Sheikh, is it the night of Qad according to the horizon of Mecca, Medina? Because famous opinion is that this surah was revealed to the Prophet while he was in Mecca. Mecca, Medina, Saudi Arabia, for example, Middle East. What if I live in Vancouver? What if I live in, uh, in Sydney? What if I live in, I don't know, Auckland, somewhere else in London? Is, what is my Laylat night of Qad? Should I follow the, the horizon of, for example, Mecca or Medina? Definitely not. Layl, technically speaking, night, it doesn't mean like this 12, 13 hours for us here. The darkness between sun, uh, set to sunrise or to morning twilight. Layl, night, it means the whole night of the, the planet Earth. So imagine that, excuse the expression, like if you are a, a, a creation of God out of the, the Earth that inhabitants of earth, all humans live on earth, you are looking out and you say that there is a blessed night in this planet. Blessed night of this planet for every part of it as it goes through the whole planet earth. So night of God means 24 hours. For you and I, it has a time, for another part of the world has another time, another part, another part. So that everyone, wherever you live in the world, in this, this, on this planet Earth, you meet the night of your night of God. So your night of God here in Nairobi is something 
and in night of Ghad in Vancouver something, in Sydney somewhere else, and it's all Laylatul Ghad, one night. Okay, so this night. This mystery is what is Al Ghadr. Subhanallah, it's amazing that even this term Al Ghadr, Qaf, Dal, Re, is used in the Quran only in this surah, nowhere else. The reason that I bring this to your notion is that when we interpret the ayat of the Quran and of our Mufassirin, they usually benefit from similar ayat, similar usages in, in, in other parts of the Quran. That helps a lot. Whereas here, when it comes to Laylatul Ghad, the concept of Laylatul Ghad has been mentioned only once in Surah Al Ghad, nowhere else. Three times mentioned, but all in this short Surah of Laylatul Ghad. So you don't have much option to go elsewhere to, to get some assistance. However, yes, still, Quran, you fasseru ba'aduhu ba'adu, parts of the Quran interpret other, other parts of it. We go to the root of it. This Al Ghad is coming from the root of Qadara. Common translations that you see in the translations of the Quran, they translate it as the night of power. I'm sure you have seen this. Okay. This is correct. I'm not against this translation, although I'm not going to agree with it. Doesn't mean if it's correct, we agree with it. Because I'm bound to follow the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. I don't know anything else. If on the day of judgment they tell me, oh, Sheikh, why did you say this? We said, we said because I was behind Ahlul Bayt al-Musalam and follow the teachings of Ahlul Bayt with all respect to all other theories in the world and all other scholars. Bad, literally correct, it means power as one of the meanings of it. Inna Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. In Arabic when you say qadir, mighty, powerful, it's come from that power. God is all powerful, almighty. The root of qadara makes it qadir. So, grammatically it's correct to say the night of power, but the teachings of Ahlul Bayt have given another interpretation to it. Qadr also means taqdeer, means measurement. And that's where the decree comes. All the dua supplications that in these nights you read, and if you notice, you see that the Imams of Ahlul say, من القضاء التي من القضاء الذي أو من القضاء التي لا يرد ولا يبدل. Oh Allah, I'm asking for a decree that will not be changed. Make it a positive decree for me. Meaning that in the night of God, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has so decreed that there is a destiny for you. There is a destiny for me. There is a destiny for every single person. From the beginning of the creation of Adam and Eve all the way to the end of the life on earth. Because Laylatul Ghad is not only at the time of the Prophet. Always existed and always will exist. So God has informed us, Alhamdulillah, we are blessed as the community of believers that yes, there is a night that the Almighty God so decreed that He will determine your destiny for this year, for this calendar year. Like you have a financial year, this is your destiny year, if you want to call it. Some of the rabayat, in fact, it says that this is a Laylatul Qad, is Ra'asul Sana. It's good if you want to, you know, some people for their homes, for some other things, they start the beginning, they say this is my beginning of the financial year or anything. The rabayat says your Ra'asul Sana, the beginning of your year, of your destiny, begins the night of Qadr. So it's good uh, also to keep this uh, in mind if you want. So the Rawayat says that uh, Laylatul Qad is the night of destiny. The night that your measure will be decreed. What is my measure? Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number one has reserved a position in paradise for every human he has created. If we ask for it, God will grant it to us on the day of judgment. You don't ask for it, tough luck. In the night of Qad, inshallah, that most likely will be tomorrow night, God has reserved something for every single one of us. You ask for it, you will be given, you will be granted. You don't ask for it, tough luck. I'm asleep, God says, well, it's not my fault if you were asleep. I had already told you, I already warned you how much I told, the, 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 like, Rawayat, Ahlul Bayt, and so how much they mentioned about the significance of this, this night. So Laylatul Qad, according to the teachings of Ahlul Bayt al is the night of measure. Now, in Laylatul Qad also always ask God to expand your capacity. Rabbish rahli sadri wa yassirli amri. Sharh sad afaman sharahallahu sadrahu lil Islam fa huwa ala nurin min rabbi. Because when in the night of God you ask, Ya Allah, expand my capacity so that I can accommodate more knowledge. 
I can accommodate more practice. I can accommodate more like giving for the sake of God. So that I never say that I've done my bit. I've studied enough. I have donated enough. There is no such thing as ever enough. Always, so far as you are alive, constantly ask this to Rabbi Shrahli Sadiqat expansion, expansion, expansion. The more the merrier. And in the night of God, because it will be given to you according to your volume. If my volume is according to, the, like, according to this uh, volume of this glass of water, that's, you cannot put double of this. Huh? This is the volume. The difference between this class and your heart, my heart, is that our heart is expandable. Of course, to a limit. Eventually, there is a limit. But I don't know where the limit is. And therefore, keep asking, Ya Allah, expansion. I want expansion. I want sharh sad so that I can always learn more and deepen my knowledge about my religion. So this is the second meaning for Laylatul Qad that so many rewayat suggest that. One question quickly here arises that, Shaykh, if there is a destiny, are you telling me that there is a fate and a terminism that will be determined tomorrow night and there is nothing else I can do? Like, for example, tomorrow night it will be determined whether I go to Hajj or not. It will determine whether that brother or sister is married or not. And once it is determined that he is going to marry that person, what if things don't go right or later on I ended the marriage? So it was the dest my destiny to have an unsuccessful marriage or it was my destiny to have a successful Hajj I had nothing to do obviously this is a misunderstanding on the, of the concept of fate and destiny long story short I don't want to go to that discussion now your will that you exercise your knowledge and options that you have is part of your destiny okay so the destiny that will be decreed for you tomorrow includes your free will as well your free will is part of your destiny part of your fate not that I am forced to make that choice and that, that decision inshallah it makes sense and it's clear like for example it, I'm destined tomorrow that Sheikh Lagai is not going to finish year 2016 it is destined that he has to die before December 2016 unless he prays Unless Momenin prayed for him, unless he gave a charity, unless he paid a visit to his, uh, for example, aunt, you know? So, at dua Imam Sadiq says, at dua at dua yugayyiru al-qada wa in ubrima ibrama. Your supplication will change your destiny, your faith, even if it was decreed. So, yes, tomorrow night something so-called evil could have been decreed for us unless we prayed unless we gave charity and that's the role of charity in the night of God that plays such a great role don't forget lest I forget let me put it here between brackets quickly every time that we pray we are expected to give a charity as well in Sydney I've made this as a, as like a, a culture custom that now Shaker may be happy with me saying this that every time, every time we attend the Jama'ah prayer, especially Friday prayer, there is a basket of donation going around. The reason for that is the reference is the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Qur'an, every time mentions aqeem salat couples that with, wa'at zakat You pray, give charity. You pray, you give charity. Prayer keeps your relation with me well. Charity gives your connection with the, like, charitable people, with the, like, uh, I don't know, disadvantaged people and, and things like that. They come together, they go together. On the day of judgment, when my book of action of uh, Salat will be open, it will open with the book of action of Zakat as well. If I am praying but not the charitable person, my prayer won't be accepted. If I'm a generous person without prayer, my charity won't be accepted. These two folders, they are stuck together, like, like twins, they come together, or go together. Therefore, don't forget, in the night of God, put aside the charity. It, it plays a big role in your faith and your destiny. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. Laylatul Qad has more meanings, if I may share a few more with you. One of the meanings of Laylatul Qad also is that if I may ask you to visualize the word Laylatul Qad in your mind, you all know, inshallah, that, uh, that much Arabic at least, huh? Laylatul Qad. Now, instead of reading it from uh, right to left, as in Arabic language, read it from right, uh, from left to right. 
instead of right to left, read it right to left. It becomes Qadrul Layla, isn't it? Layla to Qad, Qadrul Layla. Maybe also God is having a message for you and I. My friend, you will be surprised tomorrow night. At least the followers of Ahlul Bayt salam, all around the world. How many people, Allahu Akbar, Masajid, Islamic centers will be packed. People that you would never see them all of a sudden. It's amazing that morning prayer, and I always say that this is, this is the potential of the community. How many people are there for morning prayer? Where are they the rest of the year? How come that we, are, we don't turn up the rest of the year? God has allured us, has enticed us. Hey man, your destiny is here. Your destiny is here tonight. Make sure you don't miss it. I'm so much scared and so much concerned about my destiny, I make an effort to I make sure that I attend. Make sure that tomorrow night you bring your children as well. Innocent children, our gathering, inshallah, in respect of innocent children and gray beard elderly people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the rest, inshallah. Come as family. I will share, you, uh, share some ahadith with you that how at the time of the Prophet, not only they used to bring their family young and old, they would bring even their cattle and camels and everything. Because that was their capital, that was their business. Like someone is bringing his office as well. I want my office to be blessed here tonight as well. You know, all my staff, everything. God is also passing this message to you, my friend. This is an excuse. I want you to get used to staying awake at night. Do you see if you can do something once, you can do it more. Every second night, do you see that I'm telling you, and deliberately I made it ambiguous, and I did not tell you when exactly the night of Qad is. Imam Sadiq was asked, do you know really when the actual night of Qad is? I will read the rest of the ayah, inshallah, to you. Imam says, that, how don't we know? Angels descend to us in Laylatul Qad, and we don't know which night is that? The notion behind that is that there is a background to this hadith. Sunnis, they say that the Prophet used to know Laylatul Qad, he forgot it. It's in Sahih Bukhari. The Prophet used to know when the Laylatul Qad was and when they went up to him and said, Ya Rasulullah, when was Laylatul Qad? I used to know, but I forgot. I asked the sisters that, would you ever forget your wedding night? You dare your husband forget about it. <laughs> How can the Prophet to whom Quran is revealed in the night of Qad be a night more virtuous than 1,000 months? And the Prophet said, oh, actually I forgot it. Astaghfirullah. How are we belittling our messenger? Imams of Ahlul Bid said, for sure we know it. The angels are descending to us. Then why don't you tell us? This is not your benefit to know precisely. You know why? Because you are so mean. If I tell you which night is that, then you, all, you only turn up on that night. And you lose the virtue of it. The virtue of Laylatul Qad is not just to turn up on the night of, let's say, 23rd. It's to get acquainted with staying awake, come more often. God says that the virtue behind Laylatul Qad is so that you value the nights of your uh, life. If a normal life according to this surah, let's say that an average eight years, give or take, half of it is the night, 40 years. Half of the 40 years, let's say that we need to sleep. Still, I'm left with 20 more uh, years. 20 years? What have I done 20 years of my life? Watching movies, pastime, I don't know, playing, do you play cricket at night? Such a, uh, like the, <laughs> if I say no, some people may not turn up tomorrow night anymore. Sheikh Mansour is against cricket. <laughs> no, Sheikh Mansour is against wasting too much time. A bit of entertainment is healthy. It's okay. It's recommended in Islam. But don't waste too much time. Don't spend too much of your life, uh, you know, just for entertainment. Anyway, God says that I'm asking you to come and I'm telling you that the night of God is your destiny and I did not specify which night deliberately so that you value the nights of your life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran as you know has taken an oath on so many things exceptionally when it comes to night seven times the Almighty God takes an oath. Wal-layl, wal-layl, we have even one surah for it, surah al-layl. Wal-layl idha as-as, especially towards the end of the night. 
I don't. I know that already plan is made and uh, uh, you know the, the things are uh, are decided. Consider it for the future. I'm bound here. I'm sitting here to share with you my humble knowledge from Ahlul Bayt al Musalam. The best time of the vigil nights and amal of Laylatul Qad is the closer to dawn and morning twilight, the better, more virtuous. If possible on the nights of Qad to take a nap later in the afternoon or early in the evening so that you are more vigilant towards the end of the night. One of the mistakes that commonly everywhere I go I see that people get together, they have socializations, invite people for sah <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Invite friends over for Sahari, see, talk until half past one or one, half past one, what time, two o'clock for example, still two, three hours before morning prayer and then they naturally get tired and have Sahari depart. Some, they tell me themselves, inshallah we don't have it obviously in this community, some they say, Sheikh, I even miss, ended up missing of my morning prayer. Sahari is an excuse for you to be awake half an hour, one hour before Fajr prayer so that one month, like kids that you give them toys, encouraging them to go to school God one month is alluring us, get up for Sahari and hey 12, 13 hours, 16 hours, 20 hours depending on where you live you won't have to, you cannot even have a sip of water so that is enticing me looking after my body, I get up and eat and drink Eating and drinking of Sahari is only an excuse. Wake up. So that you wake up, I, we wake up, we get used to waking up at dawn. So that after the month of Ramadan, it's easy to get up at that time. Okay? Not that eat at one o'clock and go to bed. The whole purpose of Sahari, the whole purpose of fasting is lost like this. So please remember, value the nights of your life. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made an appointment with Prophet Moses, والسلام, he made it at night. وَوَاعَدْنَا مُوسَى ثَلَاثِينَ اللَّيْلَ 30 nights, and then expanded to 40 nights. What not day? Because God said, day is for you, for your dunya. I leave your day for your dunya. إِنَّ لَكَ فِي النَّهَارِ لَسَبْحًا طَوِيلًا Day time you have to go make money. Look after your, your family, your business. Night time, give some of it to me. And not to me. Imam al Askar says, Inna al Wasula illa Allah ta'ala safarun la yudraku illa bi matata' al layl. For those who want proximity with God, night is the time for this journey. Day time, do your business. But night time, dedicate your nights half an hour, one hour, more or less, as you can. Part of your nights are given to you, seclusion of the night, darkness of the night. God has put a blanket on this planet earth so that there is more privacy for you, my friend. Use that privacy, that, that serenity of the night for, to make like, love with God, for your relation with God. That is going to accelerate your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر. This ليل ما أدراك ليلة القدر. Again, it's an expression that God says only you if you knew what the night of God is. It's just like this. وما أدراك ما يوم الدين. ثم ما أدراك ما يوم الدين. سورة الانفطار. So this is an expression that Quran is using when he wants to emphasize. Don't underestimate. Like don't belittle your ليلة القدر. Your entire destiny depends on that. You may tomorrow night make a journey that you, others may not make it in eight years, over eight years of their life. Only if one microsecond you are connected, you are done, you are okay. SubhanAllah, a destiny may be decreed for you for the rest of your dunya and your akhirah. Just pray to God that, Ya Rab, I want that connection, inshallah. Laylatul Qadr khayrum min alf shahr. 1,000 months I have worked on this, historically calculated it, subhanAllah, precisely. When this surah was revealed and the Prophet is still is in Medina, Quran is foretelling that time will come. The Rawayat says that this is about the, uh, the, the, the Bani Umayyad dynasty. The Bani Umayyad dynasty was 83 years and 4 months. 
exactly. You calculate this 1,000 months that Quran says more than more virtuous than 1,000 months. It falls exactly to the period of the dynasty of Bani Umayyah. That God is saying that one month, one night of your life is worth more than the entire dynasty of Bani Umayyah. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alf shahr. What happens in that night? Tanazzalul malaika. I'm checking the time that I have to finish it. Otherwise, I had so much more to. To speak about it, Tanazalo is filled mubare present tense. In, you know, in English, we have past tense, present tense. Tanazalo it means is is coming down, not that came down. So yes, for the Prophet in the night of God of the Prophet, Quran came down. At the time of Imam Zaman, right now this year, inshallah, if most likely tomorrow night is according to. So many uh, contexts that we have collected, it seems that being tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, what comes down to Imam Zaman? Tanazzalul Malaika. First of all, let me tell you who are coming down. Angels and Ruh. That the Rawayah says that is above the It's one of the creation of God, higher than angels. That all the inspiration of the Imams, that the Lord like, Abu Hamza al-Somali of Imam Zainul Abedin comes through uh, the Ruh. Not from angels. If Ruh, Sunnis, they say Sunni scholars, majority of them, they say Ruh is Archangel Jibreel. Imams of Ahlul Bayt, they say that if it was him, Ruh uh, would be one of the Malaik, one of the angels. The fact that it's separated, already we spoke about this, Ahmad and Hassan came. So Ahmad and Hassan are two different. When God says that angels and Ruh descend down to earth, that means that Ruh is different from angels. And there was says that he is above the angels. And they are coming down. Imams of Ahlul Bayt, they say, Surat in Anzal Nafi Lalat al Ghad is one of the proofs that we have a living Imam at all time. Did you get the point? At the time of the Prophet, at the time of Imam Ali, at the time of Imam Hassan Abdullah, and during the time of major occultation, every year there is Lalatul Ghad. Why every year? Quran says Tanazzalu, not Tanazzala. Some they make a mistake in this ayah, the Arabic grammar is a little bit poor, and they think that the ayah says that uh, in that night angels and ruh descended. No, descend, not descended. Every year they descend. So when the angels descend down, to whom do they descend? To you and I? How come you never saw them? Rest assured, if anybody claims that I saw angels and angels come down to me, they are liars. Ahlul Bayt, they say that they only come to the Imam of the time. This is one of the miracles of the Imams of Ma'asumin. So in the night of God, angels and Ruh descend to Imam Zaman Ajjalallah Faraj Sharif. That proves, number one, that Imam is alive for the angels to come to him. When you want to speak about proofs for the living Imam, this surah is one of the proofs for that. And the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, they say, go to others and challenge them. Tell them, to who this, uh, uh, and these angels descend? Do they go to Imam Abu Hanifa, Malik, or to, to who do they go? No, they only go to Imam Zaman. Tanazzalul malaikatu wa ruhu fiha. For every affair, yani they come with the book of action of Sheikh Lagai for this year. Book of action of, I don't know, I don't want to name all brothers and each and every one of them. And Imam Zaman will be endorsing him as Khalifatullah. They bring it to Imam Zaman. Tomorrow, that's one of the reasons. You, now let's let let's sum it up. So for so far we have learned that Tanazzalul Malaikat wa Ruh. It means that the angels are coming down and they come with all the decrees and affairs will be given to Imam Zaman, and Imam Zaman will endorse it. Tomorrow we will learn why is it that one of the amal of Laylatul Qad is that we are asking Allah in the name of all the fourteen Maasumin, because we need them tonight, tomorrow night, like in, in, in the night of Qad. Allah Akbar. Let's go to uh, what I started with tonight then. Let's go again to Kufa tonight. The tragedy of the martyrdom of Imam Ali alayhi salam is not finished yet. As I said in the beginning, imagine tonight that is the night of the grief of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. If any of you has lost one of their dears, father, mother, you know what I'm talking about. After you come back from the graveyard, the first night is a very uh, like, distressful night for the family of the deceased, really. This is not a situation for Ahlul Bayt, alayhi 
Allame Amini Rahmatullah Alai, one of the very eminent scholars who has the, the, one of the best contribution uh, is his book of Al Ghadir, very famous book. His son says, towards the end of my, uh, the life of my father, was that I asked my dad, Dad, what is your wish? Allama Amini says that my wish is, son, that I can sit somewhere alone with no interruption and just cry for mazlumiyat of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Just cry for the mazlumiyat of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And I share part of it with you tonight so that you appreciate why we say Imam Ali was mazlum really, was so oppressed and unfairly treated. You heard about Ibn Muljam al striking Imam Ali, who used to be one of the soldiers of Amir al mumini alayhi salam. After Imam Ali, his soul departed this dunya, what happened like today, on the 21st of Ramadan, that Imam Ali alayhi salam early in the morning uh, was martyred. Already he had mentioned in his will, because Imam knows that they are not going to respect even his holy body. There is a chance that his enemies, either from Syria, Sham, or the Khawarej, who were like nesting in Kufa, they may excavate his grave and disrespect his holy body. Allahu Akbar. You see their ancestors nowadays? Remember the story of the grave of Hujr ibn Adi? Allahu Akbar. Imam mentions to his sons, make three, four symbolic graves for me in different places so that nobody knows where exactly your dad is buried. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. This is Khalifa Amirul Mu'minin. Is that how the community is supposed to deal with a leader? Like Imam Ali alayhi salam? And then the Imam says, but keep my body. After you have done the ghusl and kafan and everything and the coffin, in the middle of the night, as Jibreel and Israfil, they will come and they carry my coffin out of uh, Kufa. Let me tell you, the city of Najaf that we have today as the city of Najaf, back then it was a barren land. It was a desert out of the city of Kufa. Kufa was the city, Najaf didn't exist. Imam Ali alayhi salam tells them that you just follow my coffin because Jibreel and Mikail will be carrying my coffin out to a place that today is Masjid Sahle. And from there they carry my, uh, my body. There is a grave made ready for me. This is where Prophet Nuh and Adam are buried. If you've been to Najaf, part of the ziyarat of uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam says, Assalamu alaik wa ala baji'aika Adam wa Nuh. Because where Imam Ali alayhi salam today is buried, was the grave of Adam, was the grave of Prophet Nuh, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, Ahlul Bayt, and some of the very distinguished companions of the Imam, they follow the instruction, and the coffin is taken towards a place in the, like 10, 15 kilometers out of town, to the desert, in the desert. Once they reach the place where the grave is now uh, today, they see that it's a, a ready-made grave. They bury Imam Ali alayhi salam, and they cover the, the grave. The grave of Imam Ali alayhi salam for almost 100 years since then, brothers and sisters, the grave of Amir al Mu'minin was unknown except close family members of Ahlul Bayt and very close relatives or friends. Ziyarat Aminullah, you read it, Alhamdulillah, in the previous nights, and we all are always reading. Ziyarat Aminullah is narrated from Imam Zainul Abidin, alayhi salam, one of the most authentic ziyarat that we have for Imam Ali, alayhi salam, and all the Imams even. I share with you one secret about this ziyarat, if you have noticed. Ziyarat Aminullah is a short ziyarat, first of all. Second of all, the first, second line is visiting Imam Ali, alayhi salam. Assalamu alayka, ya Amin Allah. Have you noticed first, second line, and then turns into supplication? Allahumma inna qulub al mukhbitin ilayka wa alaha. No longer is the ziyara. It's not salama as salama alayka. What happened? I tell you why. Because even at the time of Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam, the grandson of Amir al Mu'minin, still the grave of Imam Ali was unknown. Ahlul Bayt would not show it to strangers. Imam Zain al-Abidin al-Islam from Medina makes his way to Kufa, goes out of Kufa, still in the, like in the desert, standing above the grave of Amir al-Mu'mineen, visiting his grandfather Imam Ali al-Islam, doing the ziyarat of Imam Ali. 
When he was doing this ziyara, all of the sudden authorities, guards passed by wondering what the Imam is doing here. They were curious. Immediately, this is the taqiyyad, immediately Imam Zainul Abidin السلام, he had just started his ziyara, changes the, you know, this, and changes to the supplication, like as if I'm standing here doing dua, so that nobody knows who's buried here. This is the grave, this is the mazlumiyat of Amir al Imam Ali السلام, that you are talking about. It was until the time of Imam Sadiq السلام, that something happened at the time of Harun al Rashid that the grave of Imam uh, Sadiq uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam uh, became like a public issue and because the Bani Umayyad dynasty had collapsed so there was a safety now it was okay for the general public to get to know where Amir al Mumineen Imam Ali alayhi salam uh, was buried I want to conclude with this and inshallah ask you all to uh, keep your hawa edge inshallah as well to my knowledge I know especially two great men in the history of Islam who were struck on their head to death to death one obviously Imam Ali alayhi salam we read the majlis for Imam Ali last night while he was praying the second one was the son one of the sons of Imam Ali alayhi salam and because this great son is also is having a special separate haram for himself all the martyrs of Karbala, as you know, are buried together. Imam Hussein alayhi salam and all the martyrs of Karbala. But Abu al-Fazl Abbas has a separate haram. Because Abu al-Fazl Abbas has a separate position in the eyes of God. And Abu al-Fazl Abbas is Qamar Bani Hashem Bab al-Hawa Ejailallah. Remember that Abu al-Fazl Abbas is also one of the sons of Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. Abu al-Faz, Ya Amir al mumineen I want to say that your son, Abu al-Fadl Abbas, was also struck to death on his head. But Ya Amir al mumineen may I humbly say that your Abbas, when they struck his head, his hands were severed. <laughs> he could not keep himself anymore on the horse, and therefore he fell off the horse. Ya Amir al mumineen when they strike you, your Hassan, your Hussein, Abal Faz, your children were all around you in Masjid Kufa. Ya Amir al Mumineen, your son Abal Fadl Abbas, when he was struck to death and fell off the horse, he was so lonely at the bank of the river of Farad that he had to only cry, Ya Akha, Adrek, Akha, Allah, Lanatullah, Allah, 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 وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أيام قلب ينغلبون إن شاء الله بخمس سبر حوائج five times من صيد أي شريف أم يجيب أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أم يجيب المضطر إلى دعاه ويكشف السوء أم يجيب المضطر إلى دعاه ويكشف السوء أم يجيب المضطر إلى دعاه ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء بجاه محمد وآل محمد وبحرمة الفاتحة مع الصلوات